Hi, Linda Anderson here from Linda Lou Creates. And as always, I'm really happy you joined me. Hey, today I am continuing with my Christmas in July series. And so today, this is the card we're gonna make. It is called, well, what I'm calling it, is a double flap card. Flap number one opens from the front to reveal a beautiful message. And then it opens up just like your normal top folding card to find it yet another message and where you can write uh, your own personal message inside. So let me show you the supplies you're gonna need. First up, the stamp set, <clears throat> excuse me. I use this perfectly plaid stamp set with the coordinating punch. Let me show you that as well. Okay, the tree punch, beautiful. I love this stamp set. I use it a lot. Um, another stamp set that I highly recommend and what I used here for the word believe is Itty Bitty Christmas. Uh, this, can I say, is a must have for Christmas time. The greetings are perfectly sized. It is very versatile. There are some, I mean, you can put on the inside as well as your, your sentiment on the outside. So this, I believe, is a must have. All right, now, as far as the cardstock goes, First, some scrap paper for your tree and for to punch out your, your sentiment on the front. Then, let me just move this to the side. Let me start from the bottom, kind of work my way up. Card base, Mossy Meadow. Um, I like a top folding card, and so this measures 11 by four and a quarter. Right here's the score line in the middle at five and a half, all right? You have a piece of Whisper White. This is for your insides. I went ahead and I stamped it and this is a four by five and a quarter. Okay, let me show you some of this beautiful new coming out in the holiday catalog, the Heartwarming Hugs Designer Series paper. These three designs here come from that paper pack. I love it. It's got the beautiful pear pizzazz, the mossy meadow, whisper white, and real red are the colors used on this. Now this piece, it is three and three quarters by five. Now I love matting my designer series paper. Uh, it, for me, it just brings out another color and it actually gives some stability for me when I go to adhere it down. So my mats are all an eighth of an inch bigger. So making this one then three and seven eighths by five and an eighth. So this one will go on the front. The next layer, um, this piece is two and five eighths by three and three eighths. Real red uh, mat underneath at, th uh, excuse me, two and three quarters by three and a half. Then I have this little piece here that is, I'm gonna call it the hinge, um, and that is one inch wide. And I made mine five inches, which is more than enough as far as the length goes. What you need to do is cut your, your paper, uh, your, your pattern paper first, um, and adhere it down to then the heavier card stock then. Now again, this is real red and it is just an one and an eighth by five. So adhere those two pieces together, then score it down the middle at two and a half. Okay, so that's what I've done there. I do have one more layer. Yeah, there's lots of layers to this. Um, this one is the um, Suttles 6x6 six six designer series paper and it measures 1 and 7 eighths by 2 and 5 eighths making my pear pizzazz layer then 2 by 2 and 3 quarters. Now there is a piece of Whisper White that's going to go, this is that front message so to speak um, it, it was hidden underneath this layer for me. And this uh, Whisper White measures the same as this piece here. So that means this is two and five eighths by three and three eighths. Okay, so let me just start kind of setting things off to the side here while we get busy adhering things down. All right, let's build up our card. I'm just gonna go ahead and put this piece, layer it down. All right, that one can be adhered straight down. All right. To the front of the card. So let's get this one down. 
Now the other ones you have to kind of pay attention as far as the order in which you put things down because you do need to make sure you adhere this, get this flap uh, or hinge I should say. And um, we kind of hide kind of where that goes. <laughs> so, um, okay, the tree, let's just do this little bit of stamping here. I just wanted to show you uh, a little trick regarding the tree and especially this one let me bring the stamp set back in this plaid one or the one here that is a little bit more realistic this would even go for this pine cone as well a lot of this beautiful detail could get sort of um, washed out if you have your ink pad too juicy now i'm just going to pull in shaded spruce just for fun and if I ink it up, because this is a, a juicy pad, and let me stamp it down, it's got a bit of a blobby kind of look here. Wait until I show you a trick and you will definitely see the difference. So the trick um, involves a tool, a very specialized tool, and um, it's a plastic spoon. <laughs> All you're gonna do is use the edge of your spoon and just rub it across the top of your ink pad. You're actually pushing the ink to the ends. If you wanna even do it again going this way. And you're allowing then less ink there in the center. Okay, so let me just real quick clean off my stamp so I can demonstrate. Now I'm gonna focus my inking right here all right in the center where i move that ink around now let me bring in this piece of scrap paper and now oops i had a little something on there so disregard that little blob but instead check out the plaid let's put it side by side now you see it all all right so that's the trick to that is to make sure your ink pad is not quite so juicy, pushing it aside with the spoon. And as you store it, that ink will then start to settle back into the, all over the pad, so you'll be fine, okay? So no worries there. Now, here is where I kind of, um, there's no rocket science on how to put this card together. It is, um, you kind of have to to build it in sections okay so let's start with the top Whoop, let me get rid of the ink on my fingers before I get it all over something so I like to start from the top all right so I have now these that's how it's we're gonna build it from the top now what I want to do though is my hinge first of all put it in to the inside of your card S figure out exactly where you want to put it all right so just by holding it in place I'm gonna hold that piece of card stock you know what I'm okay with it right there this piece that goes over top I did put a couple dimensionals on it and we are going to hide that hinge then this way all right so because this is a fun fold card with movable parts, I like to use tear and tape to hold it down. So I'm just gonna grab a little bit of it. And so I figure I need to stop the tear and tape about right in here. So I think I am good. All right, so let's just put a little bit on that. Just a couple little strips. Now, let me put it back in where it belongs, making sure my adhesive is there. So, so I'm just lifting the front flap, sliding this in. Uh-oh, it moved on me, so move things around to where you want it. Okay, I want this up just a little bit. Now, I'm just eyeballing, okay? So, I like this where it is. So very carefully holding it in place, I'm gonna peel off 
this release paper from the tear and tape. Now again, making sure that nothing moved, whoops, and it is. Let's make sure we're okay here. All right, yeah, I'm moving things around left and right here, aren't I? <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna hold this in place. No, I'm not, there we go. And then just press this down. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and put this front piece on. This is the piece where we're going to put down our tree. Okay, and that front sentiment. So, okay. So we're good there. And I'm covering up that end of the flap. Okay. Now, this is where we're gonna put our tree. I stamped mine in red this time the little star uh, that's actually a piece of the brass foil paper and i used let me pull it out of the package here the stitched stars dies this one happens to be this one right no it isn't it is this one right here i am really messed up today aren't i okay it is this tiny little star that when you punch die cut it out you're going to get that's what you're going to get and then left behind on the brass foil is that stitching which you can then use that on a card so that is what i used for the star and i just glued it down there okay so this will eventually get onto the front but i'll tell you what i want to go ahead and let's get the inside done so that my flap hinge is secured okay how am i going to do that once again i'm going to hide it and this time i am going to hide it with my inside piece here that's five and a quarter by four okay so it's going to co cover it up just like that okay so i want to again use some tear and tape to make sure this it stays in nicely. Okay, so this is the piece that's gonna be against the card base. This way, okay? So make sure it is on top of the inside of your card base. Now let me bring it back in here. Figure out where I want it. And it's just, you know, I'm sure there's a better way of doing this, but this is what works for me, is just essentially holding it in place. This is where I want it, holding my card base in place. Okay, and now peeling off this release paper. Okay. So once again, down that goes. Okay, so to hide this, here's where now this inside piece of white will go. So let's get that adhered in. And don't be afraid to get some extra adhesive on that just to make sure it's down nice and flat here. So. Now I really don't, I mean, I'm aware that there is the thickness in here, but you really can't see it. I mean, you have to really run your fingers over that. So I'm good with that. So let's go ahead and fold this down. Okay, time to now put the tree down. The tree does have some dimensionals on the back. Of course, I love my dimensionals, as you know. So I'm gonna pop this tree up here and So I will pop him right, because I want to leave some room for my sentiment, so right here. Now my sentiment on the front is just this little circle with the believe, all right? So I just need a little bit of glue right here, not too much, 
don't go too crazy with it because I don't want it to adhere down to anything but that pear pizzazz polka dotted layer. Okay, now we do have one more piece that needs to go on the inside here of the first flap. Now, what I like to do here is, first of all, you can see I made a mistake here. There was some fuzz or something on my stamp at the time. So, as you know, there is always two sides to every piece of paper. This is how I like to make sure that I get this adhered to end right. I will put this down on top of that red adhesive side up. And now I will bring my card over and close it right on it. So now that is hidden as well. Whoops. And we're done. So this is our double flap card. Just like this one, just in different colors. Different papers, these beautiful heartwarming hugs, new paper that's coming out. So our first flap is open, and then we get to our second one. I love it. It is, uh, like I say, it's, it's a little time consuming, some extra steps, a little finagling, but I know you can do it. If you have any questions about it, please don't hesitate to, to write me a comment and, with your question. I'd be happy to answer it. Um, I'm also so happy that you're here, like I say, and I really appreciate you sticking around and watching my videos. Um, give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Consider subscribing as well. Um, if you like Christmas and you like doing Christmas in July, uh, there is a Christmas in July card making extravaganza coming up uh, on July 25th of 2020. That's a Saturday. Um, I will have a link to all of the uh, information regarding it. Uh, I would love for you to join not only myself, but my good friend, Lynn Dunn from Stamptastic Designs. So thank you again, guys, for joining me, and I really hope you get a chance to create today. Bye now.